You know, originally, you can look at a particular scripture and you may have one thing in mind and, and, but as you get to study, it takes you to another place. Uh, original scripture text that was coming from, uh, was gonna only go, only, only go down from the fifth chapter to five through the 10th verse. But as I started to read a little more, I thought I better back up a little. Sometimes you have to back up to find out how you got to the place where you are. And so we move back up to the fourth chapter, beginning at the 14th verse. And in that verse it reads, you say, seeing then that we have a great high priest, See, we have a great high priest, y'all. Yes. It, it, it's not like it was before where anything that we had, we had to go through uh, a, a high priest. But we do have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens. Yes. See, we have a, a great high priest that's different from any other high priest that was around. This wasn't a high priest that man put hands on and say, take charge. It was a high priest that was sent from God, passed into the heavens, Jesus, the son of God. And so let us not what? Hold fast to our profession. So we need to understand where we are or whose we are. You know, we go through things that don't understand how we got to the point to where we are. You know, the title of that sermon was blessed to be a blessing. How many of y'all have gone through something with Somebody has blessed you that you were able to be where you are now. We had a blessing this morning from, from Minister Mitty as he blessed all the women here. So she was blessed to be a blessing to someone else. And we thank God for that. Because see, God in his infinite wisdom gives us things that we don't even understand. But just how blessed we are. And we look down in that next verse. It says, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched. See, it was a different deal back then. You know, the high priest, is, high priest were there, but they can only be in a certain place. You can only get so far in there because they were in the holiness of holiness and you couldn't go there. But it says, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched. Now, the God I serve, I can touch him each and every day. All I have to do is just fall on my knees and call on his name. And I know he's going to be there. So my high priest is always there. We cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. See, sometimes God knows about us. He knows more about us than we know about us. He knows when you're going through problems that, that you don't know how to solve, but he already has an answer to it. So I, I don't have to worry about what's going on. I don't have to worry about, so I don't have to call on somebody else and tell them about it because God already knows. Even when I go back and forth to that day and they give me all the medicine, God already knows what I'm going through. He blesses my body. You know, just, you know, they've been messing with my medicine and, oh, well, we need you to stop taking this for a couple of days. And, and you know what I found out? When I didn't take the medicine, I felt better than I did when I took it. So, you know, it tells me something. You know, y'all don't understand about this thing that they have. See, what they, that's why they call it practicing medicine. They don't know. They're practicing medicine. But God knows everything about you. You know, if I want to get a Chevrolet fix or something like that, I'm not going to take it to a Mercedes dealer. Them parts going to be different. I'm not going to take a, 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 a Mercedes to a Chevrolet dealer because they don't know what's there. So, you know, if you want to know the person that you need to go back to the person that created who you are. And that's God himself. And we move down to the next verse. It says what? 
let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. See, I can go to my God. My load gets heavy sometimes. I don't know how to carry it. I can go to him with grace. What that we may obtain mercy. Rightfully, we can't even go there. We shouldn't be able to go there with all that we've got and all the stuff that we've done. But it said, that's why I have to go to him with grace that I may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. That's the God I serve. He, 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 he knows what I'm going through. He sees what I'm going through. And his answer is, all. Oh, you ever look at that thing that says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. You see Jesus on one side. But if you notice, there's not a handle on Jesus' side. If you want him to come in, you're going to have to let him in. The problem that we have that sometimes we're going through problems, we're trying to carry them ourselves. And all we have to do is open that door and let him in. And he'll come in and deal with all the things that we're going through. You know, that's why we say I fall on my knees and let the Lord fight my battles, then I know that my victory shall be won. You know, because see, we sit here, and you know, you got to understand, we don't have the power. We don't have the power to fight Satan. But I do know of one that has the power because he destroyed all the things that Satan could ever stand for. And then we slide, slide down to the next chapter in the fifth, fifth chapter. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God. See, see we can call people and sometimes we take them from men and some men just call themselves because uh, if God hadn't called you or if God has called you and if God has ordained you, then you are right. You don't have to go through a whole lot of things that a lot of other folk go through. And you know, all you got to do is be accepting of God and God sends you and that those whom God call God empowers. He gives you the strength. He gives you the knowledge. Things that you thought you didn't even know, all of a sudden it comes out of your mind and you're wondering yourself. I can remember one time coming back from Galveston. I used to tape all my sermon. And I would listen to a tape. I would listen to it on the way home. And we were in the car and I was, man, who is that? And my wife looked at me and said, boy, are you crazy? That's you. But I don't remember any of that. Uh, when the spirit takes control, you have no control. You're just an instrument of his voice. And God, he gives you everything that you need. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in the things pertaining to God that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sin. Now we're blessed. We can pray, but God has to do the things that we can pray and ask. You notice that Jesus, before he did anything, he went to his father, father. Even before he healed, father. Because all the healing came through God himself. You know, we can sit and ask that God works through me. You know, I, 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 I look at some of the things that happen on TV and some of these TV evangelists and they can run me hot real quick for the things that they say, you send me, you send me hundred dollars and I'm gonna send you a prayer cloud. 
Uh, <laughs> all you got to do is pray to your God yourself. I don't need anybody to pray for me because it's a different bill. When Jesus came, he made it so that we don't have to go through that process anymore. It says, you know, say, in the second verse, it says what? For second verse, uh, uh, fifth chapter, uh, who, who can have compassion on ignorant? Huh? Oh, so you see, see some of us, you know, we 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 we're babes in 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 the word. We should not be. Some of us has been in been in church all our lives. Uh, when you first come in, okay, you 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 in milk. But we've been in there all. You shouldn't be in milk now. You should know the word for yourself. Uh, my job should be only to remind you of what you already know and on them that are out of the way for well, that he himself also is what compassed with infirmity so even me as a pastor i have my own infirmities that i'm dealing with you know i, I i'm not perfect i'm not you know so a lot of times we put pastors on a pedestal but you got to understand, but the pastor is trying to make it in just like you. He's trying to get in the door just like you. Just because I'm the pastor, it doesn't make me perfect. But we all ought to be striving for perfection. Because, see, you, if you want to be a blessing, you are blessed to be a blessing. So we ought to be out sharing God's word with those outside of the word. That's not, doesn't know anything about it, but you, that's your job as well as my job because we all are called to be ministers. And in verse three, and by reason here that we ought ask for the people so also for himself to offer for sin. You know, see, Jesus came and he became our high priest. The high priest said, no, you've got to understand back in the day, you know, we come from an old standard where there was a certain ground, the holy of holiness that you could know you couldn't go in, that you went to, you gave alms and everything in order for this priest to pray for you and ask for the things for your sin. In other words, it's like going to the confessional in a Catholic deal and you praying to the Father so that your sins, and he say, okay, well, you say four oh, amens or so. And, and, uh, you don't have to do that. You can go straight to the high priest himself. That high priest that's not ordained by man, but that high priest that's ordained by God that was called, in fact, he was God's son. In the fourth verse, it says, and no man take it this honor unto himself. And see, that's the problem that we have right now in the word, in the world right now. We have men that have made themselves high priests. Hello? And they think that you got to go through them in order to get in. Uh, 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 and, 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 and so you've got to see that, that God is not pleased with a lot of things that's going on in this world right now. A lot of things that are going on in churches right now. You know, it, it, it's all about money and greed. But it hurts me when I see all of the mega churches that are going around have all of this money to do all these big productions but when somebody in the congregation stand in need, you say, I can't help you. I have a problem. I even have a problem within our own denomination when we have to give benevolence out to places that we were taking care of places overseas and everywhere else. When we have our own churches right here in the middle of our own district that are struggling to keep doors open. 
I got a problem with that, y'all. I've always had a problem with that. But if we can't take care of home first, then something's wrong. And see, if we stop trying to honor ourselves and put ourselves on, no, I'm not doctor nobody. I'm not bishop nobody. I, you know, I'm just a man called by God to preach his word. And see, this, this thing, you know, you don't want to, the fifth verse, take, take us on, and say, so also Christ glorified not himself. Now, if anybody could have boasted, it should have been Christ. It's the son of God. But he didn't even boast of himself. He didn't glorify himself. He, in fact, he asked, hey, whom do you say I am? You know, I, I'm not worried about what I'm supposed to be, what I am here, but whom do you say I am? But he, 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 did not, he, he glorified himself to be made a high priest. Now, if it, he was the high priest, but he didn't even glorify himself to be there. But he said that unto, that thou art, because his father said, thou art what? My son. Today have I begotten thee. So his God called him, sent him down. This is the high priest from heaven that came down, had every all power in his hand. And if anybody could have boasted, he could have boasted. But he didn't. You know, he honored himself. Humbled himself, what? All the way to the cross. The sixth verse. The sixth verse takes us down there. It says, and he said also unto another place, thou art a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. I said, well, who was Melchizedek? Melchizedek was a high priest called back in the Old Testament. High priest of Salem. Now, this is one of the high priests that you took back in the Old Testament that you had to go to, to pray to, in order to get your prayers through to. But we don't have to go through that anymore. We have a high priest that I can say, Lord, have mercy. God, it's me again. Yes, yeah, your knucklehead son that messed up again. I, I know you done blessed me, Lord, but I, I, I need another blessing. And see, God was blessed to be a blessing to us. Here's somebody that stepped down out of all power, but he came down in order to save us that we might have a right to the tree of life. In the seventh verse, it goes on and it tells us, it says that who in the days of flesh, days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplication with strong crying. See, now if Jesus had to pray, how much more do you think you have to pray? Uh, let me read that again. He said he what? He offered in the days he had to offer up prayers and supplications with strong crying. This is the son of God. But yet some of us are too bold. Uh, we, we too got, got closed hearts that we don't think we should have to pray. God, in your wisdom, you sometimes say, Lord, Lord, please forgive us. Yeah, I guess he was saying, for we know not what we do. God, you know, we, we have all the opportunity in the world to make a difference. And all we have to do is call on God. And just, just, just ask. He says in his word, ask and what? Seek and knock and the door shall be open to you. Now, now you, you, you know the words. You just said them yourself. I just mentioned one thing and you finished it. I tell me you already know what you're supposed to do. You know how you're supposed to do it. But I wonder why we don't do it. We know the answers to our questions before we even ask 
You know, God's just there for us, but we already know what we're supposed to do. You know, we don't have to go through things in order to, to understand who Jesus is in our life. The eighth, word, the eighth verse says, though he were a son, yet, <laughs> oh God, he learned obedience. He was obedient all the way to the cross. He could have stopped at any time and said, Lord, they, they not even worthy. But he was obedient by the things which he suffered. You know, I, 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 Lord, I, I, I'm going through this. I, I, Sometimes, you know, I, I, I know he had to say, Lord, why, why do I have to do this? But he didn't. He kept going. He kept stepping. He knew every day that he took another step in another city. He was that much closer to the cross. But he kept walking. And but he was a son of God. Stepped down out of heaven, but he was obedient. He learned obedience. You know, he put him in the body. So sometimes we say, well, but, but, but he was Jesus. No, he was human. He became fully human. So we always say he was God. Yeah, no, he, he, was, he was God, but he gave up his Godship in order to become fully human to show us that it could be done. But yet we go on our way and we, we have every excuse in the world of not to serve or not to believe or not to, to follow Jesus like we should. In the ninth verse, it says that, and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation. And now we say I'm the author of something. Hey, that mean you, you, you. Uh, hello, you put it out there. You, you wrote it. It's out there. You're the one who put it out there. You couldn't get to salvation. We were destined to death, a death that led us straight to hell. But He gave us eternal salvation unto all of them that what obey Him. So, you know, okay, we, we know what we're supposed to do. We know how we're supposed to do it. We know why we're supposed to do it. So, why we don't do it? Why we don't do it? How many of y'all want to go to heaven? Well, uh, he said, he showed us the way to get there, huh? Now, if you want to go to Louisiana, you're going to take IT and East, huh? But if you get on north and go IT and West, you're not going to get there. So that's the problem that we have. We know how to get there. So why are we taking the wrong road? Uh, you know, we, we know what we're supposed to do. Obey him. It's simple. It says, remember the old song? The old warrior's going to know it, trust and obey. Because that what? There's no other way. <laughs> See, we, need to, we, we know all of those songs. We hear them. They resonate resonate in our body but we don't really sometimes do we really believe do we believe there's a salvation do we believe there's a heaven what's the direction to go to heaven turn right and go straight and you'll get there that's all you got to do is turn right and go straight 10th verse, call of God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. So Melchizedek was, that's the only way, that, that, that was there. After Noah come in, and you know, Genesis, all the way back to Genesis, the order of Melchizedek, the high priest, 
but you got a high priest from heaven. But he was after that order. Because in that order, you still had to believe and trust in God. You had to trust and obey and know who he is and know why you're doing certain things. But yet we start to think that we are running things in this country and we're not really running anything, uh, but our mouths. Uh, we don't understand that God is not pleased with what's going on right now. And you're wondering why you're having floods. You're wondering why you're having fires. You're wondering why you're having earthquakes. You're wondering why right now, we, we what what is it? What is it, April 8th when the total eclipse is supposed to happen? Telling folks, you better go and buy your all the stuff you need for your house. You better go get this. You better go get that because the telephones won't work and this won't happen and this is going to happen. God has already been preparing you for anything. But you'll go and do things. I remember when, 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 we, when we got into uh, uh, <laughs> the new century, pastoring at another church, and, and they say, well, when we change over in that new century, all of this is going to happen, and so you better get your flashlights. And you better. And I had one of my little members of the church. She had all the flashlights. She had started to get the food together and everything together because she said, oh, oh, the world is going to cease to happen. But it says in my power that no man knows the day nor the hour <laughs> when the Son of Man shall come. That's when it's going to change. But we'll believe everything else but the Bible, the basic instruction before leaving earth. We're going to have to learn to trust God for who he is. In the 11th verse, in the 11th verse it reads, <laughs> of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered seeing ye or all see, seeing that you that of dull of hearing <laughs> in other words what they're saying is that we hear these things we know what we're supposed to do we know the things to say but sometimes I wonder we're hard of hearing or we're dull of hearing we, 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 we hear it and we don't hear it. You remember the Bible always say, them that have ears, let them hear. It didn't say, you know, you, he know he got, you got ears. But sometimes when you're speaking, you know, that word is just dull. You don't hear it. You don't understand it. You go about your own thing. So we're dull of hearing. It's, it, it, sometimes it even, don't even go in. You know, you know, it just hits us and go all around. We don't hear it. And so that's what it's talking about, of whom many things to say and hard to be uttered, but seeing, because see, he's telling us what's going to happen. The Bible, that's nothing new under the sun. The Bible has told us everything that's going to happen, but we have to wait to look at the Simpsons and, 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 and all these other things. Well, Simpsons said it's going to happen. Everything they say happened, and this happened, and this happened. There's a movie out. And he talks about all the things that's supposed to happen with this AI, artificial intelligence, and how the Tesla cars are, are going to go out on their own and with no drive and just take off and start doing their own things. And, you know, I say, okay, oh man, we get all upset about things like that. But we don't believe the Bible. We hear things said. But it's hard to be other, but seeing we are dull of hearing. We're not hearing what God says. We hear what other folks say. In the 12th verse, the 12th verse says that for when the time 
ye ought to be teachers. In other words, we ought to be teaching now. We didn't heard so much of the word, now we ought to be teaching. You ought to be out sharing things. See, so we don't stop teaching about God. You know, we, we, we don't tell our children. There's some things that, that we, we need, you know, that, that the Bible says spat rods for the child. You know, we got to get it. We got to start. We ought to be teaching God's words right now. You, you know enough about the Bible to be a pastor. But yet you won't share the word. You know, we talk about Jehovah Witness, but they go out and they doing what they pastor told them to do. But you have need that one teach you again. You know, I, I, you have to keep telling you over and over and over about the same thing that you already know, which be the first principles of the oracle of God, of seeings of God, the things of God. You already know that. You know who God is. You know that God say, I am a what? A jealous God. Put no other gods before me. You know that. But yet what we do? We put money in front of them. We put houses in front of them. We put cars in front of them. We put everything in front of God. God is not sleep. You see, before we first came into ministry, and you first heard the word, you won't milk. Because you didn't understand the word. So we broke it in little. You know when you told your kids, Jesus well. God is good. God is great, you know. You don't milk, we're teaching you now. But now you we gotta keep feeding you milk because you're not ready for for strong meat yet. You're not strong, you're not ready for the word of God that tells you how you supposed to act, how you supposed to raise your kid, how you supposed to treat your wife, how you supposed to treat your husband, how you supposed to treat your neighbor. It's in there. I haven't said anything that's not in the Bible. And so, but we're in now. We're still in the word, but we're still on milk. We got to get out of that. We ought to be on meat right now. We ought to be able to eat T-bone right now. You know, but we can't do that now because you can't digest it right now. We're still on milk. You ought to be blessed to be a blessing. The 13th verse say for everyone that uses milk is what? Unskillful in what? In the word. Mm. So what it's telling us is that sometimes the only time we open that Bible mm, is on a Sunday. But we need to open that Bible and study. The Bible says study the word what? You show yourself approved what? Rightfully dividing the word. See, you ought to be able to divide God's word. And, but the reason you can't divide God's word because you're still on milk. You got to get off the milk. You got to start getting into God's word. To know that the you are, uh, to know what it means. Sometimes studying means that I might have to have uh, 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 two or three Bibles. You, know, you might not understand this Bible. I might have this Bible because I understand this one, but I want to read this one because this one tells me more. But I want to read, but I need the Bible dictionary over here, and I need a concordance over here. It's a way to study, to open up God's Word. Because you got to understand, the words back then sometimes don't mean the same thing that they mean now. There's one deal that in the Bible that is, it has been misquoted over and over, and that's that one little simple verse saying, God shall supply all my... Huh? You put an S on it, it's wrong. It's need. 
Because if he gave you all your needs, you wouldn't need God anymore. Because you got everything that you need. But if he give you, I got to go back to my God. I got to keep praying to him because I got another need that happened here. I can preach this sermon. This sermon might go fit one person over here, another person over here, and another person over here. But there's still another need out there that you have to go. So if I give you all your needs at once, you won't need a God. And so I give you one at a time. Say, but you unskill in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. You're still a baby. You got to study God's word. There's no way around it. And then my 14th found verse, and this is the one that I like. It says, what? Strong meat belong it to them that are full age. I'm talking about somebody that's grounded and rooted in the word of God. I know, I don't know of the man. I know the man. I know him for myself. I don't know him because grandma made me come to church. I don't know him because mama made me come to church. I know him for myself. That when I got problems, I, I can go to God myself. Because I know that he came and he, he, he walked and went through all of this to be a blessing. He blessed, he was blessed as he come from heaven to be a blessing. And that's what we are in the word of God. If you want to know more about who you are and who you are, get in the word. Know him for yourself. And I guarantee you. And, I, and, I, and you may want to go home and just take that book of Hebrews and, and read it for yourself. Now, just because you hear me say it, you know, because see, sometimes I, I've seen pastors take a word, and turn it around, and it don't have nothing to do with what that text says. Read it for yourself. And understand it, and I guarantee you, you'll see that God has a word for you in there, that you are blessed to be a blessing. And we said all in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and let all say, Amen.